Hi, today we're going to cover the femur, hip, and pelvis. The pelvis and hip, you will do a lot more than the femur x-rays. Uh, femur, typically if there's a high intensity accident or a fall, um, you would do something like that. Fem uh, pelvis and hips, a lot of times you'll do those for general pain, sometimes arthritis, um, but you'll see quite a few of those exams. Um, just a little bit of anatomy here. Um, the femur, the largest and strongest bone in the body. Um, so of all the bones, it is the biggest. It will not fit on one cassette typically unless you have a very small person um, or if you have a pediatric patient. Just a little bit of anatomy here. Um, some significant anatomy is the tro two trochanters. You have the greater trochanter. It's on the lateral border. Um, you can actually palpate this pretty easily. The lesser trochanter is going to be on the medial side um, towards the midline of the body. The intertrochanteric crest is going to connect the two, so there's going to be a little ridge going across these two areas. You, of course, have the head of the femur at the very uh, top or proximal end. You'll have a thin kind of neck that will show up um, when it's in a true AP. The via capitis, a little area where the blood flow kind of goes into and feeds uh, the main part of the um, femur down through the shaft um, and the body of it. This shows an anterior view. Um, you should notice is that this is a right femur, so with the head medially, you're going to have the greater trochanter on the outside. Posterior view, you don't need to know everything on here. We're not going to really get into the medial lip of the line of sparrow or the pectineal line, but it is along the back portion of the um, femur. AP distal femur, there's a couple ways to do um, these femurs. In this particular instance, what we're going to do is we're going to go from the knee and get up as high as we can towards the thigh and then just probably do an AP um, proximal femur. With this one, just use a lengthwise cassette. It's going to be at 40 inches. Um, use a marker to indicate overlap. So what you want to do if you're doing this particular view is you want to put your marker up high so that when you do the AP proximal, you'll have a little bit of overlap and all you have to do is really look for your marker. If your marker is in there, then you'll know that you have the entire femur on there without missing um, any part of the mid shaft. Tire knee joint should be visualized in the distal two-thirds of the femur. Teller should be in the middle of the condyles, just like you would see on a AP knee. Uh, long axis midline of the femur. Femur only do proximally and an AP knee. So if you're doing the proximal portion from the hip all the way down as far as you can, it's the same thing. But get about two-thirds of the femur on there and then just include an AP knee. Lateral distal femur, uh, there's a couple different ways to do this, but typically you are going to do this long cassette for this particular view. Uh, it's going to be lengthwise again. Uh, you're going to put sponges in front like the knee and the tibia. So as we showed you in class, we don't want this towards the back. We would rather have this in the front and then cross this leg over as much as possible. This is a medial lateral view. It means you're going through the midline, exiting the lateral portion of the body. Um, condyles won't be superimposed because of the divergence of the beam. So you see that right through here. And through here, it's not going to look exactly like a knee, but your ends should be somewhat lined up so that you're correcting a little bit of rotation on there. But your inferior lines going across this way will not line up typically. This just shows a cross table uh, trauma view. So if the patient can't move their leg at all, you suspect that there is a femoral break. Um, what you would do is you put a long cassette in this way and then just get from basically just about underneath the knee as far up as you can. So this will just kind of go between the patient's legs and go up as far as it can. And then you'll do a separate trauma view, which we'll discuss for next semester for this upper area in here. Lateral proximal femur, this is one way to do it. This is not the typical way though. Uh, it's not as common as the frog leg hip, which we will show you in just a moment. But this is a way to get it if your patient can roll into almost a lateral position while keeping their knees still on the table. A couple angles of the femur to mention. Um, the femurs do not travel straight down as you're looking right through here. So the legs actually go in medially just slightly on both sides. And that's about a 5 to 15 degrees um, medial, um, medial travel path on that. If you also look at it from the side, it actually has a 15 to 20 degree angle that's going to go anteriorly as well. So you need to be aware of both of these angles. It does go front a little bit towards the anterior portion of the body and it does go medially towards the other leg as well. Some more anatomy. The pelvis is made up of 
four bones. Okay, so if you remember these four bones, it's going to be two hip bones, one sacrum, and one coccyx. So we'll break this down further. But basically, this right here in the kind of tan color is your entire hip bone. Okay? So you've got two of these hip bones, one sacrum, one coccyx, and that makes up your pelvis. As we break that down further into the hip bone, so we take this hip bone and we break that down into three parts as well. So that's into the ilium, the ischium, and the pubis. The ilium by far is the biggest part of it. It's the most superior edge of it. It's where the iliac crest is. If you ever forget the name of the bone, iliac crest will be the ilium. Ischium is going to be uh, down a little bit more inferior and lateral, while the pubis is inferior and a little bit more medial. Um, they all fuse together to kind of make up the acetabulum where the femur actually articulates with the pelvis. Just another lateral view showing a little bit more anatomy. Um, we don't do too many lateral pelvis, but you should notice that there is a ASIS, the anterior superior iliac spine. This is actually what you can press on. It's one of the landmarks that you can actually palpate along with the iliac crest. The rest of the things back here, like the posterior iliac, posterior inferior iliac spine, um, it's just going to help when you're looking at rotation when we get into the spine later on in the second semester. Uh, ilium has pertinent landmarks. Ischium with the pubis makes up the obturator foramina. So the obturator foramina is this big old open hole right through here. So basically these kind of handles of the ischium and the pubic bone will kind of make up this kind of opening that you see here. This shows another look at it. The ischial tuberosities are going to be the most inferior portion um, of the pelvis. The most superior portion, obviously, would be the iliac crest. A little more anatomy. So within this, you have a what's called a ramus. So it makes up kind of this long, kind of narrow portion along the superior portion. It's going to be the superior ramus. Inferior ramus is going to be this entire thing going across through here on the bottom. Obturator foramina, as mentioned, you're going to see here and through here. We have specific views that we do to kind of open or close those up a little bit or to open up the inlet of the pelvis so that we can see better. We'll be going over those inlet outlet views uh, next semester as well. Greater or false pelvis. This is going to be basically the bony portion of the pelvis going all the way around. The brim of the pelvis is going to be this little circle that's going to go along the inside here, which gives us the lesser or true pelvis. So the lesser pelvis is going to be kind of really the area for women uh, where the birth, birth canal is. More landmarks, uh, iliac crest, ASIS, greater trochanter, you can actually palpate pretty well. If you put your finger on your outside portion of your body and kind of turn your foot uh, medially and lateral, you actually feel the greater trochanter moving against your finger. And then the ischial tuberosities is also a landmark, but typically we are not going to palpate that for harassment reasons. AP pelvis should be at 40 inches. You can increase the SID a little bit if you need to. A large focal spot for this because we are using the entire 14 by 17 field size. Table bucky, uh, it's going to be in crosswise, so don't get confused and put this in lengthwise like an abdomen. Uh, AP pelvis, you need to see the entire bony portion um, of the pelvis, so you need to see this greater part of the pelvis on there. Marker should go in the lower corner, so as we talked about with the femurs going in medially, there is almost always space to get it in this corner here without affecting it in the anatomy. Another place to put it would be up high. Because the pelvis is kind of round at the top, there is a little bit of a triangular space that you can put your marker on there as well. Abduct the toes in approximately 15 to 20 degrees. That means we're going to turn the legs in towards each other. We'll show that on a slide coming up. Light should be barely above the iliac crest. So as you find the iliac crest, you're really going to just put maybe like an inch at the most at the top. You want to try to get the iliac crest as close to the top of your IR as possible because that will give you a little bit more of the femurs at the distal ends. Uh, let's see. Greater trochanter should be seen laterally, which you see right here. If you've got a good turn, those will be on the outside. It will show the neck pretty well. And then with this, the lesser trochanter should disappear. Uh, central ray is midway between the ASIS and the symphysis pubis. The easiest thing I can tell you though, instead of trying to find the ASIS like right around here and the symphysis pubis to get your centering point is just to get the top of the light field just barely above the crest. 
This is an example of abducting the toes a little bit. So toes towards each other, that means ankles have to be apart. You just kind of pigeon toe the feet in towards one another. So proper shielding of the pelvis looks like. So for males, it should be just below the symphysis pubis to cover the testes. In females, in the inlet of the pelvis, you want to include a shield to protect the ovaries as much as possible. Generally, we're looking at bony anatomy, so if the sacrum is a little bit covered up or the coccyx, that's absolutely fine to protect the patient. Just make sure that the shield does not go into the bony anatomy, which you see here. Just some anatomy that you can kind of go over. Um, entire iliac crest must be visualized, so if you trim off any of the iliac crest at the superior portion, it's no good. Occasionally, you'll have patients that are a little bit wider and may not get the entire greater trochanter on one side, you can absolutely do a, just a straight AP hip view just of the proximal portion. This just shows you a few different ways that the lesser trochanters look when the feet are not positioned properly. So as you see the lesser trochanters here, this is no rotation. If you forgot the rotation and had their feet straight up and down, then you would see the lesser trochanters here. Ideal positioning, they should tuck behind the main portion of the femur on there. What you'll all no notice with the necks here is the neck will open up much better when you're turned in like this. If you have the feet kind of falling towards the outside in lateral rotation, then you'll see the lesser trochanters almost in profile, and you can see that the femoral necks disappear. Difference in anatomy, male pelvis has an acute angle of the symphysis pubis, a little bit narrower, shallower, oval shape and the ilia are a little bit less flared. So guys typically do not have the hips that women have. So as we look at this, the acute angle we're talking about is right through here. So if this is less than 90 degrees, if you draw a line from here to here, you're usually looking at a male pelvis. If you're looking for an obtuse angle, what that means is you draw a line this way and this way, is now you have an angle that's greater than 90 degrees. Um, it's a little bit wider, deeper, it's a little bit more rounded in shape. And the ilia, the iliac crests, are a little bit more flared, um, typically for women. This is an AP unilateral hip. Occasionally you'll have to do this if you clip any part of this on the pelvis view. Um, you can also do this for prosthetic devices. Really all you got to do is use a 10 by 12 lengthwise, so a little bit smaller cassette. Um, you want to internally rotate the leg just to make sure it's at that 15 to 20 degrees, just like on a pelvis. You're going to see our one in the two inches distal to the femoral neck. It's a little bit hard to kind of find the femoral neck, so what I would say is go with the top of the light field superior um, at the ASIS. So if you find the ASIS here, just your light field right across there, and it should be enough to get the entire AP view of it. Cross table lateral hip, you can look at this. This is what we're going to use. Um, to get trauma views of the proximal hip. This shows another look at it. Frog leg view, this is the lateral basically of the proximal portion. We're going to use a 10 by 12 lengthwise. We're going to abduct the femur 45 degrees to the outside. Um, see our mid femoral neck reality. You can just find the crease um, that you see in the leg and center one to two inches distally of that. Then you will get the entire head of the femur um, with the acetabulum on there as well. This is going to be the same view for the lateral proximal femur as well. Inlet outlet we will cover in the next semester. It's just going to open or close the inlet a little bit better. You can look it over if you like, uh, but we won't be having this on the test for this semester. Some different types of fractures that you can look over based on where it's fractured. It's just has named a little bit different. Broken pelvis, you get these from car accidents, uh, fall from bicycles, um, the tsunami victim here hung onto a tree basically to save herself but she had a broken pelvis when they found her. Evil Knievel, if you remember him, Daredevil, regular um, regular guy just showed up in x-ray pretty much after every one of these crashes. Shows a little bit of the uh, Prosthetics that they can put in to kind of anchor everything back together. The many injuries of Evil Knievel that we just mentioned, broken things way too often. Hopefully you enjoyed this PowerPoint. If you have any questions, we will certainly be going over these in class. So we'll talk to you then.